functions are great. Aren't they fun? They describe the world and also they allow us to see things a different way. And you've been solving all sorts of functions, having fun with them, and I've been enjoying it too. Turns out there are a couple of different types of questions that arise in life. And I wanted just to take a moment to share a couple of them with you because they're kind of special type of function equation type things that, that we'll see. One is just, for example, here's a function. f of x equals 12 minus 8x. And here's the kind of question we often get asked. Find out where the function equals 0, which is just a very fancy way of saying Take the function, set it equal to 0, and find the values for x which actually satisfy that. That's all it means. So for example, in this particular case, what would I do? I would take the function, which is 12 minus 8x, and I set it equal to 0. And I now solve for x. And that's going to tell me the values for x that will satisfy this. And so what do I get? Well, if I solve this, what do you do? Um, there's lots of ways of doing this. If you like to keep the x's all on this side, I'd subtract 12 from both sides, then divide by 8. Or you can move the 8x over, whatever you want. I'll, I'll subtract 12 from both sides. So I see 8x equals negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 8. And I see x equals a positive 3 halves. Voila. That is the x value so that this function will equal 0 there. If you take 3 halves and plug it in for x, what you'll see is that 12 minus uh, 8 times 3 halves is 12 minus 12, which is 0. Awesome. Cool. All right. Now, there's another kind of thing that we're often asked in life, which is we'll be given two functions, in this case p of x equals x squared, q of x equals 2x plus 3, and they'll ask us to find the values for x for which these two functions are equal, which namely asks us to solve when p of x equals q of x. So what we're saying here is we want to find the x values for which they share the same y value. So what do you do here? It's actually no big deal. You just do what's said. Take the p stuff, which is this, and set it equal to the q stuff, which is that. So all you do here, couldn't be more fun, take x squared and set it equal to 2x plus 3. And now you solve. Well, now you look at this equation and say, what's going on here? Well, this is a quadratic. Okay, quadratic, everyone come over to my house. We're going to have fun. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to bring everything over to the left-hand side and have the thing equal 0. So if I subtract the 2x, I see x squared minus 2x. If I subtract the 3, I see minus 3 equals 0. And now I've got to see and hope this can be factored. Let's see if it can be or not. This tells me they have to have opposite signs. Two numbers multiply to give negative 3, add to give negative 2. I can do it. I can do it. 3 and 1. x squared negative 3x plus x is negative 2x, and then this times that is negative 3. Awesome. So either this equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, which means x equals negative 1, or x minus 3 equals 0, which means x equals 3. And so I see there are two solutions to this equation when p equals q. Like, kind of like when Harry met Sally. You can almost imagine things. Yeah. It's when x equals negative 1 and x equals 3, and you can check it. If I plug in negative 1 into p, I see negative 1 squared, which is 1. If I plug in negative 1 in here in the q, I see 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2 plus 3, is, in fact, 1. So in both cases, I get 1. So that checks. The values are equal. And if you plug in 3, 3 squared is 9. And here, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. So you can see it really does check. Anyway, these are some popular things that you'll see in life with functions. Setting two functions equal in solving or setting a function equal to zero in solving. Very handy, very important, and a heck of a lot of fun. I'll see you soon.